Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at the laws of logarithms so we can answer questions from exercise 14e. So the laws of logarithms stem from the laws of indices and they're very heavily linked and you'll see um, some similar rules between the two. So I'm just going to look at the first rule here and um, generate this using the rules of indices. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by setting log base a of x equal to the number b or the letter b and log base a of y equal to c. So what we'll look at first is um, the reverse of this which is a to the power of b. Remember a can come along and push up that b um, as a power. So a to the power of b equals what we've got left which is x. And a similar thing with, with the uh, c value, a to the c equals y. Now remember what we would do if we times these indices together, we'd get a, times, a to the power of b times a to the power of c, and we would add these indices together. So x times y is equal to a to the power of b plus c. Now let's get rid of this a and take a log of base a from both sides to undo this power. So it's going to be log base a of xy equals b plus c. But remember back to what b plus c was. That would be log x on its own add log y on its own. So here, the first rule here is that log a of xy can be split up using an addition symbol um, of two separate logs, still of base number a. This only works if you've got the base numbers that are the same. So log base a of xy equals log base a of x plus log base a of y. And that all stems from the rules of indices. And a very similar thing could work if you just put a division symbol here and a negative symbol in the indices. So log base a of x divided by y is equal to log a of x minus log a of y. This is effectively the division law and the multiplication law previously. We have a powers law as well, so if you were just to do uh, to the power of k on both sides here, you would effectively multiply your powers together. So this would be log of base a x to the power of k. Now this is x to the power of k, not the whole log. Um, equals and you can effectively bring the k to the front as a multiplier so now it's k times log a of x because when you do a power of a power you get you multiply the powers together so the power law and uh, remember the rule that uh, x to the minus 1 equals 1 over x or that sort of applies in this case here if you do log base a of 1 over x you get the same if you do minus log base a of x and the reason for that is because when you've got a negative on your power you do 1 over your answer. So these rules here are going to be very very important for the rest of this year's uh, A level maths and next year's A level maths as well so make sure you remember them and make sure you learn them off by heart. Let's have a look at how we would apply these in questions. So if it's log base 3 of 6 add log base 3 of 7, you can multiply the 6 and the 7 together here. So you get log base 3 of 42. So that's how you can simplify a log's expression. Question 2, if you've got a negative, remember you would um, subtract or divide your two logs together. So it's 15 divided by 3, which is log base 2 of 5. Okay, let's have a little look at this one here, a little bit more complicated. 2 log base 5 of 3 plus 3 log 5 of 2. So what we would do first is we would bring inside the factors that are multiplying uh, the front of these expressions. And the way that we'd bring them in is as a power onto the number that's inside the log. So it's going to be log base 5 of 3 squared because the 2 is going to bring brought in as a squared figure and it's going to be plus log base 5 of 2 to the power of 3, because the 3 as a multiply at the front can come inside the log as a power. Work out what these values are, and then when we add logs together, you times their values together. So it's log base 5 of 72. So this is just one way that we've seen that we can simplify logs using these laws. 
Let's have a little look at some more complicated ones. Now the first thing I would do here is sort out the 4 that's at the front of this expression here. And the way we'd bring the 4 in, remember, is as a power. So bringing the 4 in, so it's 1 half to the power of 4, which is effectively 1 over 16. And now we can divide the logs by each other because they are subtracting each other. So it's 3 divided by 1 over 16, which is the same really as 3, divide, 3 times 16, which is log 10 of 48. Alternatively from here, what you could have done is pulled out a negative 1 in your power here um, and brought it out to the front. So it's 16 to the power of minus 1 here. Bring the minus 1 out to the front, so double negative that to make it a positive, and then simplify these two with log base 10 of 48. Same answer both ways. Let's have a little look at doing this algebraic now. So expanding logs using these laws of in laws of logs here. So log base a of x squared y z cubed. So first thing we do is we could split the multiplication of this up with an addition into separate logs. And then we'd probably bring, want to bring the 3 and the 2 to the front as multipliers, given that they were indices inside the logs. So this would be our final answer here, uh, written out longhand effectively. Let's have a look at another question here. So log base a of x divided by x cubed. So in this expression here, we've got a division. So we need to subtract these if we want to write them as separate logs. And then bringing the free 3 to the front as a power, then it would be log base a of x minus 3 log base a of y. Let's have a look at a little bit more challenging one here. Log base a of x root y uh, divided by z. So in this case here, let's split them up using additions and a negative for the division here. And then on the square root here, let's treat that as y to the power of a half. So then we can bring the half to the front, so it would be a half log a of y. So that's a nice little rule you can remember here. If you've got half of a log, you can bring it inside as a square root, because that's what it is representing as an indice. Question 4 here is log base a of x divided by a to the 4. So we'll split this up first using a subtraction law. So it's log base a of x. We'll just leave that alone. Now log base a of a to the 4, what we can do here is bring the 4 to the front. And then log a of a, that's just the number 1. Whenever you do log base of a number of that same number, you get the value 1, because a to the power of 1 gives you a. So here it's just going to be log base a of x, subtract 4. Okay, let's have a look at solving equations now using these laws of logs. So 2 log 2 of x, there's a couple of ways of doing this. The first way would be to use the laws of uh, logs. So bringing the 2 inside as an indice, um, you could have divided by 2 to start with as well. Um, let's now reverse this law of logs here. So 2 can come along and boost up that 8. So now it's now x squared equals 2 to the power of 8. Work out, work out what that is. So that would be 64. And then the square root of 64 is positive or negative 8. However, I did say uh, previously, or maybe in a different video, that you can't do logs of a negative value. So log uh, 2 log 2 of 8 will give you 8, but 2 log 2 of minus 8 will give you a math error. And the reason is you can't calculate a logarithm of a negative value, and the reason that is is because remember that on the um, exponential curve we didn't have anything in this bottom section here. Um, that's the reason for it. Effectively, we don't have anything that could give you an inverse of minus 8, so we can't uh, use minus 8 in our logs function. So the total answer here is going to be x equals 8. OK, let's have a look at solving this equation here. Log base 10 of 4 plus 2 log base 10 of x. Now, it's just important to check, first of all, that before you start this question, they do have the same bases on their logs. 
in this case they do. So what we can do first is we can uh, use the power law, so bring the x squared inside and then add these two expressions together, so effectively multiply what we have inside those logs. So it's log base 10 of 4x squared. Now we need to get rid of the log, so bring the base number as a base number on the power of 2. So it's 4x squared equals uh, 10 to the power of 2. That will be uh, 100. Divide by 4, and now we'll get 25. So x is equal to positive or negative 5. But remember that you can't do log of a negative number, so it will just be the answer 5. It's really important that where you've got negatives or where you may have a negative inside your log to just double check to see um, whether your expressions are uh, allowed back into that function. You can't do log of a negative number. OK, let's solve this equation here. So we've got log base 3 of x plus 11 minus log base 3 of x minus 5 equals 2. So the first thing I would do here is simplify the logs together using the subtraction law or the division law. So it's log base 3 of x plus 11 divided by x minus 5. So now we can bring the 3 along and boost up that power of 2. So it's 3 as the base number to the power of 2. So it's going to give us x plus 11 divided by x minus 5 equals 9. And then just solve this like you would any other expression. Multiply through by x minus 5 and do a little bit of rearranging and you get x is 7. Just double check you can substitute 7 into your uh, both your logs and it won't give you log of a negative number. In this case it won't give you log of 18 and log of 2 which is absolutely fine. Right, two sets of questions here for these um, logarithms uh, functions here. Um, it's really important that we get these correct so that we can use them later on in, in the next chapter. Right, pause the video and have a go at these two questions. Right, so the answer to question 1c, first of all we'll bring the power in on the logs. So it would be log base 5 of 2 to the power of 3, which will be 8 plus log base 5 of 10. Just do a double check that the bases are the same on each of these expressions. So it's going to be 5 and a 5, which is fine. So it's going to be 8 times 10 for the addition law. So it's log base 5 of 80 as your final answer. Writing this as a single logarithm. OK, writing um, write this in terms of log A, log Y, and log Z. So the first thing I would do is split these up using the addition law. So it would be log base A of x cubed plus log base A of y to the power of 4 plus log base A of z. And what we'll do now is we'll bring the powers out to the front. So we're leaving them just as log base A of x plus 4 log base A of y and log a of z. OK, so we've gone in different directions with both of these questions. In this one here we've written out in longhand, in this one here we've simplified. OK, let's have now have a look at solving some equations. Slightly more difficult questions here, pause the video and have a go at these two questions. Right, OK, so for question 4a here, the first thing we need to do here is combine these two logs together on the left-hand side. So we've got log base 2, and it's the addition law, so it's 3x equals 2. The next thing we do is we would get rid of the log, so do 2 to the power of both sides. We'll bring the 2 along and boost up that power of 2 as the base number. So it's 3x equals 4, so here x is going to be 4 over 3. Right, OK, the slightly more difficult question here now is log base number 3 x plus 1 equals 1 plus 2 log base 3 of x minus 1. And the question here is show that 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 equals 0. There's a few different ways of doing this question here, 
But the way that I'm going to do this is, in general, you have to bring logs onto both sides in order to get rid of them. Um, it's a bit like squaring and square rooting. So let's first of all bring the two log base 3 of x minus 1 onto the left hand side, and that will equal 1. Bring that in as a power, and it's the law of division here. So it'd be um, x plus 1 over x minus 1 all squared equals 1. And now that we have combined this into a single logarithm, we're going to do 3 to the power of 1. So x plus 1 divided by x minus 1 squared is going to equal 3. And now expanding these brackets, we're going to get um, x plus 1 equals 3 and that now we're going to times up x minus 1 squared. So this is going to give us 3x squared minus 6x uh, plus 3. And then taking everything onto the other side and we get 0 equals 3x squared minus 7x minus plus 2. Which is exactly what we're looking to show. Okay. Now at this point here, just to show you, um, you can't do 3 to the power of both sides here. So you can't just make this x plus 1 equals 3 plus um, x minus 1 squared. That's not going to work there. You need to combine both hand sides into one single logarithm. If there are any expressions just on their own without logs, move them onto the other side. And then it's going to be a bit of rearranging by undoing the logs. The next thing we need to do here is hence or otherwise solve this expression. So I imagine we can fit these into a pair of brackets. Um, so we're probably going to have the minus 2 on this side here. And then a minus 1 on this side over here. So we times them to get a positive and it's minus 6x minus another x. That will give us minus um, 7x. So I'm just going to use this space over here now. So either x is equal to 1 third or x is equal to minus 2. But first, before I leave these as my final answer, I'm going to substitute them into both of the log expressions that I've got to see if I get log of a negative. For the case of a third, I'm going to have four thirds in this expression here, which is fine, I'm allowed that. But in this expression here, I'm going to have log of base 3 of minus 2 thirds, which I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to have log of a negative number here. So this expression here, this answer here is not allowed. Sorry, this should be a 2 plus 2 because it's negative down there. Yeah, plus 2. Can I substitute an x equals 2 to leave only positives inside my logs? Yes, I can. This will be log 3 of uh, 3, and this will be log base 3 of 1 here. So that's fine. The final answer in this case here is x equals 2. Right, so do be careful of that and make sure you substitute your final answers back into your log functions to make sure that they don't end up leaving you with log of a negative number because you can't do that. It would be basically the same as square rooting a negative number. In A-level maths, you can't do that. Right, okay, thanks very much for watching this video. It was a pretty uh, difficult one. It was pretty long. Um, it was different to anything you've seen before at A-level maths, uh, at GCSE maths especially. So do have a go at some questions from exercise 14E. I know I always say this, but do persevere through the difficult questions and do go and ask your teacher if you need any help on any of these questions. Right, thanks for watching.